thousand miles from the border is where I am, but immigration and border control are major issues in tonight's Republican caucus, and boy, have the politics changed. A CBS News poll finds more than 80 percent of Republican primary voters nationwide now agree with a recent comment from Donald Trump that immigrants coming here illegally are, and I quote, poisoning the blood of the country. Now every Republican candidate is vowing to get tough on the border. And what we found walking around Iowa is that is exactly what many Republican voters want to hear. I would build a great wall. In the footsteps of Donald Trump in 2016. You've got an open border where terrorists can come through. Every Republican candidate is taking a harsh approach to the border in 2024. They all have to go back. We have to enforce the rule of law in this country. And that's a worry for people like Sonia Morciego, who arrived here from Honduras on foot more than 30 years ago. I came here in to this beautiful country because we have a lot of opportunities if we have one purpose, to come to work. So I came in 1990, illegal. After shoveling snow to open the liquor store she owns in Marshalltown, Iowa, she told us today's politicians just don't understand people like her. I didn't stop working since I came to this country. I work very hard every day. But Republican voters sure seem to have made up their minds. Nearly three out of four hope to see immigration numbers decline, with most believing that newcomers are making crime, drugs, the economy, and even the country's social and moral values worse. I want a culture that's still our culture. Janita Boyd is one of those Republicans in Marshalltown. People don't want to move here. They call us Little Mexico. Since 1990, the Hispanic population here has jumped from less than 1% of the town to more than a third, with many finding work at a meatpacking plant that anchors the local economy. What's so different about the people coming over now compared to the many waves and generations of Americans who've come over before in one way or another? I think it's the numbers. You know, there's just so many, and uh, it's hard to assimilate that many people. That's a fear we heard about often here in Iowa. First, on a farm. A lot of these people, and, you know, right or wrong, but uh, are bringing their own culture with them, and they're, they're not interested in, in becoming American. And then on a Sunday after church. I mean, we can't provide ourselves. How can we going to provide for them? Most of them are young men. Hmm. God knows what they're going to do. Hmm. I fear that the most. But maybe the most emotional border issue of all is drugs. In the Cedar Rapids suburb of Lisbon, Hans Arwine delivered the worst news to his wife, Lori, nearly two years ago. He said... Bailey is gone, and those words continue to this day to haunt me. Their 22-year-old son had died after taking what he believed to be Xanax, she says, but was actually a fatal dose of fentanyl. I, I was angry, actually, and knowing what's coming across the border, and looking in that direction, I knew, had a general idea where it came from to begin with. While far more fentanyl is seized at legal ports of entry than illegal crossings, and the vast majority is smuggled by American citizens, according to Customs and Border Protection, the candidates are promising to use the U.S. military to take out Mexico's cartels. I'll be smoking the terrorists on our southern border. Something the Arwines fully support. Whatever it takes, until it hits your home and you lose someone you lose a child, it's a piece of your heart. Sonia Morciego agrees with the need for more protection on the border, but she hopes people will appreciate the potential there too. Now an American citizen herself, her daughter and grandson are in the U.S. Army. We're at a moment where many people are saying the border needs to be shut and we can't handle any more immigrants like yourself. What do you think when you hear that? <clears throat> it's very sad. It's very sad because everybody needs uh, help, right? So everybody needs the opportunities. And so what a crossroads we're at as a country, guys. I mean, my, 
My heart breaks for the Arwines who lost their son to drugs, and I, I know how strange and even sad it must be for Janita Boyd to live in Marshalltown, a town that looks and feels nothing like the one she grew up in. But then I also reflect on my own family story, something I covered for us a while back. Uh, I've got a great-grandfather who came from Italy in 1904. He was what we would now call an unaccompanied minor, a teenager, no English, no papers, no permission. His kids fought in World War II, and, you know, now his grandson's here talking to you today. So I think a question for millions of Americans out there with stories like mine is, what is it that we feel is so different from my great-grandfather and Sonia, who you just heard from today, and her kids now serving in the U.S. Army? I mean this genuinely, Gail. I, I, I wonder if the only difference I can see is time. Mm. Mm. I don't know. I think you said it right when you said we're at a crossroads as a country. Thank you very much, Tony. I want to talk, follow up, John, about that poll, that, that 80 percent of the Republican primary voters agree with this racially charged comment coming from Donald Trump that immigrants coming here are illegally, quote, poisoning the blood of this country. That's so unsettling to me. Well, you know, when Tony's piece had all the complexities of this issue and had the real voices and real concerns of real people, right, on both sides of this, but when you talk about blood, yes. you've jumped from immigration. Blood doesn't have an immigration status. Mm -hmm. So a, a non-European person in America, legally or illegally, has the same blood. Yeah. So now you've jumped over into something else, and why does this matter? Well, politically, what it sends is a signal from Donald Trump saying, I am more border than anybody else. I say outrageous things, and that's proof that I'm going to be tougher on the border. So his numbers go up with Republicans because they want somebody who's tough on the border. But what it means as a president is when issues come in towards you, how are you going to think about those people with that blood? Exactly. Whether, they're, they're, whether you're the toughest on immigration, when you're talking about blood, you're, you're not talking about policy anymore. You're talking yeah. about human beings. So how are you going to filter those human beings when you're thinking about them in terms of blood, which is totally contrary to the American idea, exactly. which is a country founded on ideas, not on blood. And not only is he saying I am more border than anybody else, he is pointing to his voters and saying, you are more American yes. than anybody That's else. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And we are under threat. It's and, a, and, and motivated to vote by threat is a very powerful motivation. It's a really yeah. us versus them. I hear people say, this is not who we are as a country. And I'm starting to wonder, who are we really as a country? It's a great question. I'm asking myself that. Thank you. Thank you.